Lord. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me now? Amen. Well, that's good. I'm thankful. I, oh, that's okay. I appreciate it. I'd rather have two than, than none. Amen. Now, I'm dangerous because I'm not used to preaching with two hands. So y'all, y'all bear with me through all this. I'm thankful. Amen. It's Thanksgiving. It's a time to be thankful. And I, I am grateful that, one, you chose to come to the house of God this morning. Yes, amen. Amen. To worship the Lord. Amen. I, I am thankful for my family being here with me. Amen. I'm thankful for all the, the good food I had for Thanksgiving. Amen. When I put my suit on this morning, I realized I was a bigger preacher than I was the last time I saw you. Amen. Amen. I, I appreciate Brother and Sister Morris taking me to, to eat last night. Amen. And Afterwards, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad for a man of God who knows how to lead the way because we were in one mind and one accord. Afterwards, uh, I pulled into the Andes drive through and I saw two vehicles in front of me with Brother and Sister Morris. So, I, amen. I was, I was thankful for, you know, understanding that, that was the will of the Lord for my life at that point. Uh, I, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful for that. Amen. It's easy to tell his, his truck because he's got that okay on the back of it there. Amen. And I, I was thankful for that. I am thankful that we know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. Be, because as thankful as I was for all the good meals that I had on Thanksgiving, and as thankful as I am for my family and my church family, I am thankful for a God. Amen. Who knows where I am. A God who shed his blood for me and a God who leads me. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I want that lamp and that light to guide my every step. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes I, I, I go a little off the beaten path. Well, it's okay. You can say amen to that. You go off the beaten path too every now and then. Amen. Amen. But it's in those times when I'm off the beaten path. It's in those times when I am at my weakest that God shows his strength and his power over my life. Because I realize, number one, when I'm off in uncharted territory, amen, God is there to lead me and guide me. And when I am at my weakest, when I don't know where to turn, when I don't know what to do, when I look around and there's trouble on every side, I can look to the author and finisher of my faith, knowing that he is able to write the next line of my life life and he's faithful and just to forgive me whenever I get myself in a little bit of trouble. Amen. Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles to Job chapter 19 verse 25. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and look at that. And if you're able to stand, we can stand in honor to the reading of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Amen. I want to just speak to you for a little while about that Redeemer. That Redeemer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I thank you for the men and women that are in this place this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your word and for the power of your blood. I ask you, Lord, to anoint my lips that I may speak your word, God, in this place. I thank you, Lord, because you are our Redeemer. You are our soon-coming King. I ask you, Lord, to give us an ear that we can hear your word, God. Bless us, keep us in Jesus' name. And everyone said in Jesus' name. And you may be seated this morning. I know my Redeemer liveth. Now, Job, to utter those words, think about the situation Job was in. He was in a terrible situation. You don't want to trade places with Job. Job looked like he had everything going good for him. Then the devil comes and attacks him and takes every, takes his family, right takes his job, almost took his spouse, and he probably would have wished sometimes he, God would have. Amen. 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 I, I, last week was my 22nd wedding anniversary. Amen. And I, I'm glad I still have. Well, I'm thankful. <laughs> I, I'm thankful for that. I, I, you know, I, I hopefully, you know, she, she stays. If she ever leaves, I'm going with her. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't really relate to Job in, in that regard. But he was in a bad place. His 
most, his closest physical relationship, his friend, his spouse, the person, his better half, was telling you just as soon, go on. Yeah, come on. Amen. Now, your spouse may have told you to go on, but they didn't mean to go die somewhere. They just meant for you to get out the kitchen, get out the house, quit hunting so much. I don't know. I'm maybe meddling, maybe preaching. I don't know. If that's for you, you pick, take it. If it's not, just drop it on the side. But they told you to go on. You've been told go on before. Amen. But God never tells us just go on. He always leads us on a path back to him. And as bad of a situation as Job was, his friends come to help. Well, they're speechless. You ever left your friends speechless? Yeah, I have. Amen. My kids have left me speechless a few times. Amen. I cringe every now and then when someone tells me a story, you know, and says, Ethan said, because I have no idea what that little guy's going to say. Amen. Sometimes it's even true what he says, but sometimes not so much. (laughs) Amen? Because he has a vivid imagination. (laughs) Amen? And so his friends were speechless. Their imagination couldn't even comprehend the depth of sorrow that Job was in. But God. When Job begins to pour himself out to God, when Job begins to pray, when Job begins to talk with God, he tells God how bad it is. There's one good thing about God. You can tell him anything. You can't hide it from him anyway. If it's bad, you just as soon tell him it's bad. If it's good, you just as soon give him a little praise and say, thank the Lord, it's going good. Because if you don't praise him in the good times, I promise you, church, the bad times are coming. And it's not to make you fearful of the bad times. It's to make you appreciate the good times. When you feel like you were blessed and highly favored. Amen. You've heard that before, blessed and highly favored. I cringe when people tell me they're blessed and highly favored. Amen. Because I know everything's going good for them. And I'm like, man, if we could just stay in that, you know, glow of the spirit where the angels just sing when we walk into the church doors. Amen. Amen. I want to be blessed and highly favored. I'm not preaching against it, but I'm preaching that enjoy that place. Give God praise and give God glory. Amen. Amen. I got to see Albert Pujols hit a home run this year. I enjoyed that place. But it doesn't sustain me behind this pulpit right now. (laughs) Amen. It was a great experience while it lasted. But he's retired. He ain't hitting no more baseballs. And that's okay. He's going on to other things. And I'm not in Bush Stadium right now. And if I was, I'd be all by myself and it'd be cold. (laughs) Amen? I'm right here. And for being right here, I'm going to give God glory. Because I know He's my Redeemer and He is my soon coming King. And I know God is my provider. That whenever the storm clouds of life begin to roll in and I hear the thunder of the storm approaching... And bless God, I I see the lightning. And whether that be a sign of the Almighty God or Satan himself falling as lightning to the earth, amen, I know that God is still in control. I know that as Job said, my Redeemer liveth. So let's go back to Job being transparent in prayer. Job begins to question God. Now I know all of you are real spiritual people. Y'all got prayer life, y'all read your Bible, and you come to church. Amen. I got the three things this morning. (laughs) Amen. Got them. I got them. So I know y'all don't fight this. But but me sometimes, myself, I'll talk like a Cajun, but me. But I, amen, sometimes I, I, I question God. I ask him, God, what are you doing? Because I don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. And if I'm really being honest with God, I don't like it. Now, I know y'all don't struggle with that, but I'm I'm just talking about me. Amen. Amen. I I was in the valley of decision about Andy's too last night, but I got a sign. (laughs) I was thankful for that sign. Amen. (laughs) When Job began to tell God all of those things, 
God responds. Now, sometimes I think God's just telling me to be quiet, and He's not. That's my flesh. Getting weary in prayer. That's my flesh. Attributing the way I react instead of the way He reacts. And God looks at him and says, where were you? (laughs) Where were you when I began to create the heavens, the earth? Where were you when I began? And and he just goes through and lists. I'd read them all to you, but y'all got time to, you know, read your Bible. That's number two. Amen. Amen. I tell you that for this reason. Because when I don't understand, when I don't see a way, I realize that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I have to make my life draw closer to my Redeemer. When I realize how big God is and how he looks, and he wants good things for me, not bad things. God ain't ready to strike you dead. Amen. You do something bad, amen, he ain't ready to strike you dead. I'll give you a case in point. I loaded my minivan up. Amen. I have two sick kids at home. God will just have to take care of them, pray for them. Amen. They were running fever, and so I'm like, oh, the devil's fighting. Now, I don't know if the devil's fighting or, you know, they licks the semen at school for all I know. You know, I don't know. It's 50-50 on that. Amen. Who knows? So I load everything in my, my minivan, and I decide, you know what? I'm going to check the air in the tires. I check the air in the front two tires, 29 pounds. Not great, not bad. I go to the back tire. It, it, the, the minivan door was blocking it. Ah, forget that. You know, kids can, can push that in. So I go around to the other side, and I get around the other side, and I'm not a mechanic. I'm definitely not a tire man. But when I tell you that that rim was sitting on the asphalt, on that little rubber cushion, I didn't need my air gauge to tell me it was flat. And I thought, Lord, I have trusted you with these tires. I have neglected these tires. I have rotated these tires because apparently they're under warranty, so you got to rotate them. And I'm like, Lord, you know, I feel kind of foolish because I got my air gauge and I'm on the fourth tire and like at what point did I like not see that my, my tire was there? And God knew that tire was flat. Maybe the devil knew too. Maybe the devil was fighting. I'm not going to give the devil that much glory. I'm going to say I just run over something at some point and it just, you know, busted my tire. And I'll get a new tire. But if I let the flat tires of life stop me from the destination God has ordained, if I let, amen, the cares of this life and the things of this world stop me from coming to an altar and speaking to my God, if I let the problems of this life stop me from giving freely of my praise and of my worship, of my money and of my time, then I will go from one flat tire to the next flat tire in life. Why? Because that means that's the only point where I'm truly trying to have a relationship with God. Job is a great example of someone who had a relationship with God when things were going good. He was transparent with God. He was real with God when things were going bad. And he gave God glory at the end when God restores him. Why? Because he was faithful. He realized who his Redeemer was when when he had everything and when he had nothing. And I want you to know, whether you're blessed and highly favored or you're going through the trauma and struggle of your life right now, our God is able to redeem you and able to take care of you, and able to see you through no matter what. Titus 2 and 14 says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a particular people, zealous of good works. Amen. That zealous there means fervent. They were eager. 
There's something about being eager. When I come to the house of God, I want to be eager to worship him. Amen. The Bible would say zealous in the King James, but I want to be eager. There, there's something about being eager. There's something about being excited about when you come to the house of God. There's something about looking forward to hearing the word of God. Amen. To praising him in, in, in singing and music of being eager, of having an expectation of what God is going to do. Now, I got to tell you this morning, I'm glad if you just showed up. Amen. 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 I, I'm happy if you just showed up. I'm excited. But God will take your faith. God will take your life to another level if you have an expectation that God can. Amen. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Not that just stumbled in and, and happened to make it. Amen. But diligently, that means there is an eagerness, an expectation, and a desire. I want that desire. I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself right now. I want that desire that when I come into the house of God, I can praise him and I can worship him to the best of my ability. With all that he's given, regardless of what's happened. Amen? I mean... If Andy's had run out of the boot daddy last night, I still got to give God glory this morning. Now, that could have been divine intervention for God coming and trying to keep me from that spirit of gluttony that has been on me since Thursday. I was going to teach y'all and tell y'all that I was going to talk about gluttony all the way through, but I'm still fighting it, so I can't preach it yet. <laughs> I'm praying after Andy's, God, my Redeemer can come and take care of me for the rest of the week. But I was going to go to Andy's, amen. Yeah. God is able to deal with us in our time of need. Why? Because He desires for us to get closer to Him. He doesn't want anything to separate. Nothing, Paul said, can separate us from the love of God. You can't be bad enough. You can't be stubborn enough. To separate you from God's love. Amen. But you can walk away from it. Now, I'd like to tell you, amen, that in 22 years of marriage, amen, I, my wife and I's love has just been warm and wonderful, amen, and we have had the perfect marriage. I'd love to give that testimony, but it would be a lot. Because, man, that woman has gotten on my nerves sometimes. Amen. And I've gotten on her and I've gotten on her nerves sometimes. Amen. Now I know y'all don't have those problems in y'all's marriage. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all may have, and that's why y'all moved on. Amen. It's <laughs> just, just being real. But God. Y'all live. Boy, I got all y'all's attention now, huh? <laughs> you hear a pin drop. Amen. But God. Because of commitment that she made to me and I made to her is able to redeem those tough times. Right, right. Amen? Amen? When she tells me I'm not supposed to text and drive, and I just got one more thing to say. <laughs> Amen? It's best for me not to text and drive. Amen. I called my mother on the way here. Amen? And I'm talking, going down the road. And she said, I want you to arrive there alive. And the next thing she said is all mothers do, she's like, and take care of your voice so you can preach tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Why? Because she loves me. My wife loves me. She doesn't want me to text and drive. She, in giving me that information, amen, it's probably the law of Missouri, too. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. Don't let law get in the way of nothing, amen. <laughs> That's a whole nother sermon. We're talking about a redeemer right here. She is redeeming my life. Why? Because I got, you know, I got to be transparent. Sometimes I'm captivated by that phone. Amen? I'm captivated. It don't matter if I'm driving. Yeah. It's just me. The rest of y'all, amen. Amen. If y'all don't feel conviction, you don't come and pray. Amen. Y'all done beat the phone devil, and I'm still wrestling with it. Amen. It captivates. It buzzes. I put it on airplane mode. Amen. I looked at it this morning. I had forgotten it on airplane mode. I had 368 messages. I don't know who was trying to get a hold of me, but, you know, bless God. I hope they, God intervened for them. Amen. <laughs> I, I felt bad. 
<laughs> I slept wonderful, though. <laughs> I'm telling you this for this reason. God is our Redeemer. I can't put my trust in what I can Google. Amen. I can't put my trust in what I know. I have to put my faith in Him. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I have faith that God is going to bring you to a closer relationship with Him. I believe that. Amen. I pray that. I know that that is the will of God for your life. I know that's the will of God for your family. But you have to open the door. Amen. This morning when I came into church, this cute little blonde-headed girl opened the door for me and said, I'm glad, Titsy. That's you. Amen. And I'm like, you are a great greeter. I feel welcome. Amen? God opens the door for us. He greets us. He loves us. And He wants us to know that we are part of His body, His church, His fellowship. We are His people. And as His people, He tells us to come and fellowship with Him, to come and communicate with Him, to come and pray. Prayer is just our communication with God. Amen? His Word is just Him speaking to us so that we can apply His principles and His law to our life. Why? So that we can draw closer to Him. So that when the big questions of life come and the big questions of our co-workers and our family come, we can say the Bible says. And the Bible says that we are able to be overcomers by our testimony, by what we have gone through. Not by who we were, but by who God has transformed us to. All things are passed away. All things have become new because He is our Redeemer. He has taken us from the captivity of our old ways and our bad habits and set us free and loosed us. Why? So that we can testify to this world that He is real, that He is is alive and that he is able to transform other people who may be struggling with what you are going through. And I got to tell you, I'm glad for people who have overcome things. I am so thankful for them. Why? Because they give me hope that I can overcome. I mean, I, I may have gone round and round the mountain like the children of Israel not getting to the promised land, but I know eventually they got to the promised land and God took care of them. If you feel like you're just going round and round the mountain, I've got good news. God's got a promised land for you. God's got a place. Amen. And it may not come your way. It may not come the way you think it should. But God has ordered your steps so that when you begin to build an altar. Now, what is an altar? An altar is a place of sacrifice. Sometimes I've got to sacrifice my goal. Sometimes I've got to sacrifice my, my, my ways. Amen. Now, I'm not a stubborn person. I'm not. But my goodness, some of those kids that I have, oh my. They can be stubborn. They can be hard headed. They can hold on. And, and I argue for a living as an attorney. And so my natural inclination with, with stubborn is to argue with it. And I thank God for a godly wife who's like, you, you can't argue with them. You can't. Amen. I'm in control. Ooh, you ever said that? I'm in control? If you've got to tell yourself you're in control, you're probably not in control. It's like in, the, in, in an argument, just telling someone, you just need to calm down. <laughs> just throw gasoline on that fire, baby. Watch it burn. <laughs> Amen? If you've got to say you're in control or you've got to tell someone to calm down, neither one of them are happening. God is in control, though. So when we come to him, we don't have to be in control. What we have to be is authentic in who we are. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. Lord, I don't know how you're doing it. Lord, but I know you have a path for me. You need to pray that prayer. Lord, I don't know how you're doing it. I don't know what you're doing. 
Amen. Unless God's spoken to you, then talk to your pastor. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he needs to hear a praise report. If it's something you've been struggling with and God's given you the answer, go tell him. It's called a testimony because that means you've passed the test. And when you've passed the test, God gives you the ability to proclaim his goodness and his grace. Amen. And God gives you the ability so that you can overcome. Yes. We're overcomers by our faith. Amen. He's redeemed us. He's redeemed us. When Jesus is on the cross, the ultimate place of redemption. He's in between the two thieves in Luke 23 and 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand, one on the left hand. Skip into verse 36. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Not everybody's pulling for you, and that's okay. Not everybody's pulling for you. And that's okay. At your job, not everybody wants you to succeed. Right. Amen. Amen. You know your neighbor that gets on your nerves? You know him or her? My, my neighbor, his name was Wayne. I love Wayne. I tell you stories about Wayne. Wayne helped me get closer to Jesus than any neighbor I've ever had. <laughs> Because you know how we were talking about being blessed and highly favored and the angels sing when you come in? Amen. Wayne brought me to a place of prayer and repentance many times because there were things in my heart that I did not realize were there that Wayne, he just knew how to show them. <laughs> he was not prophetic at all, but believe me, he changed me for the better. But he still got on my nerves. I would pass his house and it would just bother me. And, and I realized Wayne wasn't the problem. I was the problem. I'll say that again. I was the problem. Wayne wasn't doing anything but sitting there living his best life behind his great wall fence with his sheep and goats and animals that stunk. With his attack dog that would bark every time I'd walk by. I mean, I could go on and on. Wayne wasn't the problem. What was inside of me was the problem. And when God began to, re you know what? I was just like, I, I would pray for Wayne. Now, I wouldn't pray like prayers of like restoration for Wayne or anything. I would pray like, you know, will Wayne take down his 10-foot fence that is just crazy blocking every view in the world? I would, I would pray for all of those kind of things. And, and finally, I had to pray for myself. God, let me see Wayne as you see him. Oh, that was a hard prayer. But you see, God did that. Why? Because my soul needed redeeming. Because my soul needed to change. Because my life needed to be transformed. And all of us, whether you, you've been in this for one week, amen, or 50 years, all of us need our lives to be redeemed. And Jesus on the cross, in between those two thieves, listening to all the mocking and everything else that was going on, feeling betrayed and alone, there, shed his blood and gave his life so that I could be redeemed. One of the thieves, a condemned man on the side of him, sits there and, and mocks him. Two. The other thief saying, don't you understand? We're here because we did something wrong. We're here because of our actions. In the middle, he didn't do anything. Amen. And Lord, when you come to your kingdom, remember me. Right. Woo! And those words that Jesus gave right then. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want to hear, welcome, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I want to I be able not only to read my Bible, but I want to see my Bible one day become my reality. Yeah. 
I want to hear, amen, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into my grace. I want to hear those things. Why? Because I want to make heaven my home. And I have that opportunity because of Jesus Christ on Calvary, shedding His blood and saying, telling me that I can have forgiveness of my sins, that all my stuff inside of me against Wayne can be forgiven. That eating too much on Thanksgiving, bless God, can be forgiven. That whatever it is in our life can be washed and sanctified. And I thank God for that love. Because it's in that love that we know He is real, He is alive, and He cares for us. I want to challenge you this morning. Don't let anything separate you from the love of God. Above all, and most important, don't let sin separate you from God. Amen. Amen. We've all sinned and come short. Amen. Amen. I I was sinning about Wayne because I was so upset in my heart. Amen. I'll tell you a real quick story about Wayne because you need to hear this. I thought Wayne stole my trash can one day. Now, I got to tell you, I take good care of my trash can. And it's one of those big industrial strength, you know, trash cans. And not only did Wayne, it it was at the road where the trash man comes. Not only did Wayne steal my trash can, but Wayne wrote his name on my trash can. I was mad. I pulled that trash can a third of a mile down my road to my house, I spray painted over Wayne's name. And I put the biggest V for Vincent, three and a half foot across that trash can. Because Wayne had stole my trash can. I was angry. I went in my house and I called my wife. I dialed my cell phone like that too. And I said, baby, you will never believe what Wayne did. What did Wayne do? I mean, she's calm. Midwesterner. I'm a southerner, boy. My blood was boiling. I said, Wayne stole my trash can. Not only did he steal my trash can, put my name on the stinking side, his name on the stinking side of it. I said, but I fixed that. She's like, what'd you do? I said, I put the biggest V you can ever see for Vincent on it. She said, JJ, you know what? I'm not into guessing games right now. I'm still seeing red. She said, Wayne got a new trash can. Let that sink in. Wayne got a new trash can. The new trash can that I thought was mine was Wayne's. (laughs) Wayne did not steal my trash can. I stole Wayne's trash can. I put graffiti on Wayne's trash can. I blotted Wayne's name out like it was the book of life right there and made sure with my spray paint. Now, I'm a Christian, Sister Morris. That Holy Ghost meter inside of me, it was apparently at zero for uh, discernment whenever I was dealing with the trash can, but now it was in full, full force. So what should I do? Well, I was tempted to just swap out trash cans with Wayne. I can't lie to you. But that would not be the right thing to do. So I called Wayne. Wayne answers his phone with the usual greeting that I get from Wayne. What you want? I said, Wayne, I got bad news for you. I said, Wayne, I saw your trash can. I took your trash can. I said, I thought it was mine. And I put a huge spray painted V on it. And... Uh, I'll bring it to your house, what you want to do. And I thank God that he will not put more on us than we can bear because the man on the other side of the phone busted out laughing. I was like, oh, Lord, this is either going to be good or bad if he's laughing. He told me, don't worry about it. I said, I'll bring it to your house. He said, oh, no, you don't go on my property. <laughs> he's still Wayne now. He said... <laughs> He said, I'll just turn that V to a W and it'll be Wayne. I said, well, that worked for me, Wayne. <laughs> he said, you just put it back at the edge of the road and I'll take care of it whenever I get home. And 
He said, from now on, you'll know that that's, that's Wayne's trash can and not yours. I said, you got me there, Wayne. And then I thank God that I didn't put it off calling him because that would have just blown up in my mind so many ways. And I thank God for my wife who was able to laugh at me in my time of need because, you know, humor breaks a lot of tension, and there was a lot. I'm, I'm getting, getting nervous just telling you the story. I can't go lie. I noticed I had both hands with white knuckles on the pulpit. <laughs> I tell you that story for one reason, and this is the reason. Sometimes we make big mistakes, and we think we're doing the right thing, and God's redemption power is there for us to care for us. And we have to say, you know what? I messed up. I stole the trash can. Amen. Something that is really insignificant in the grand scheme of things. But it was big to me at the time. And we have to say, God, help me through my trash can experiences in life. Because your grace is sufficient, your blood is sufficient, and you were able to restore me even in the midst of my weakness. Let's stand this morning.